In this presentation, we will discuss atrioventricular block, sometimes referred to as AV block or heart block. The objectives of this presentation will be to help identify the different types of heart block on an EKG, understand some of the common causes of heart block and the locations of each, and finally, know what to do in a patient with each type of heart block. First, we will go over a few basics of the EKG and heart block. Then we will discuss each type of heart block in more detail. The definition of heart block is the delay or interruption of transmission from the atrium to the ventricles. This can be from a structural or anatomical cause, or it can be from a functional impairment of the conduction system. When we look at the basic EKG rhythm, we will be discussing the P wave, which is the depolarization of the atrium, the PR interval, which represents the signal passing from the atrium to the ventricle down the conduction system, and the QRS complex, which is the depolarization of the ventricle. In first degree heart block, we are actually discussing a delay in the transmission. In second degree heart block, there is intermittent interruption of the signal. And finally, in complete heart block, or third degree, there is a complete interruption of the communication between the atrium and the ventricles. Here is a representative drawing of the heart and its electrical conduction system. First, we see the signal start in the SA node, pass through the atria causing depolarization. Next, the signal passes to the AV node, down the Hisperkinji system, through the left and right bundles, and finally resulting in depolarization of the ventricles. You can imagine that an abnormality at any point in this circuit could lead to heart block. On this slide, we see another drawing of the conduction system with each part labeled. Interestingly, each of the types of AV blocks have similar causes. Parasympathetic activation slows the heart rate, and this is transmitted by the vagus nerve. Increased vagal tone leads to slowing of the SA node but also slows transmission throughout the entire conduction system, especially at the AV node. This can be present in normal persons, especially in high-performance athletes who have high resting vagal tone. Ischemia is a common cause of a malfunctioning conduction system. Infiltrative diseases and inflammation such as myocarditis can lead to damage of the system. Surgery, such as valve replacements, can accidentally lead to conduction problems, especially in AV node given its proximity to the AV valve. Medications are common causes of heart block. Beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, and digoxin are common medications that affect the AV node to slow transmission and that can lead to heart block. First degree heart block is a delayed transmission from the atrium to the ventricles. This will show up as a prolonged PR interval, as this time represents the transmission from the SA node through the AV node to the ventricles. The normal PR interval is 120 to 200 milliseconds in duration. In this EKG, we can see that the PR interval is longer than 200 milliseconds. In standard EKGs, 200 milliseconds represents one large block. The AV node is the most common site but can occur in the atrium or even past the AV node. The QRS will have a normal appearance and will always be present. It is typically asymptomatic in patients and can be seen in healthy individuals. One study, however, showed that patients with this abnormality are more likely to later in life require a pacemaker or develop atrial fibrillation. Second degree heart block is the intermittent loss of conduction. This will show up on the EKG as a P wave without a corresponding QRS complex following it. There are two types and are classified as MOBITS1 and MOBITS2. MOBITS1, also referred to as winky buck, is a progressive lengthening of the PR interval until an interruption occurs. You can see this on the EKG presented. Physiologically, the AV node refractory period is prolonged. Each impulse reaches the AV node when it is partially refractory, resulting in progressive lengthening of the PR interval. 
Eventually, an impulse will reach the AV node when it's in its absolute refractory period, and it will fail to conduct. You will notice the P2P interval will remain constant, but the PR interval lengthens each time. Almost always, this is a problem with the AV node. It can be seen with high vagal tone, ischemia, medications, or structural heart disease. It is also not always permanent and may come and go. It's typically asymptomatic, but can result in symptoms during sinus bradycardia. The drop beat results in fewer ventricular contractions and a reduction in the cardiac output. This can lead to dizziness and presyncopal feelings. Treatment consists of avoiding medications that will affect the AV node and removing any offending agents. If symptomatic and no cause can be found, then a pacemaker may be necessary. Second degree type 2, or Mobitz 2, is similar to type 1 in that there is an intermittent dropping of a QRS complex. However, in type 2, the PR interval remains constant. You can see on this EKG that the PR interval is constant before the drop QRS. Typically, the abnormality lies distal to the AV node. And like Mobitz 1, it can be symptomatic, but it's typically not. Unfortunately, it is almost always permanent, and a pacemaker is almost always indicated if no reversible cause is found. This is because that in type 2, it often progresses to complete heart block. Also, the lesion is below the AV node, and if complete heart block develops, the escape rhythm happens at a slow rate. We will discuss escape rhythms on the next slide. In complete heart block, the signal from the SA node never reaches the ventricles. This is going to happen at any point from the AV node and below. What you will see on the EKG is that the P waves will march along at a rate that does not correlate with the QRS complexes. You can see that the P waves are going at a rate of approximately 100 beats per minute. The QRS complexes are also regular and are at a rate of approximately 40 beats per minute. They have no relation to one another. Remember that all cells in the myocardium can depolarize and act as pacemakers. The cells in the conduction system are specialized to do so at a faster rate than that of the normal myocardium. As a general rule, the more distal the cell in the conduction system, the slower the depolarization rate, and thus the slower escape rhythm. The slower the escape rhythm, the more symptomatic the patient will be. Typically, the AV node has an escape rhythm of approximately 40 beats per minute. So in this EKG, the complete heart block is likely to be at the level of the AV node. This also explains the need for pacemakers in Mobitz 2. Because you remember, the block is below the AV node. If someone with Mobitz type 2 were to progress to complete heart block, their escape rhythm would be likely less than 40 beats per minute, and the patient would likely be very symptomatic. Patients with complete heart block are almost always treated with a pacemaker if no reversible cause is found. So to review each type, remember that first degree block results in a prolonged PR interval, but each P wave is accompanied by a QRS complex. In second degree, we have intermittent drops of the QRS complex. To determine the type of second degree, the PR interval must be assessed for an increasing length. In complete heart block, there is no communication between the SA node and the ventricles. Treatment always starts by looking for and treating reversible causes. Pacemakers are almost always indicated for second degree type 2 and third degree if no reversible causes can be identified. Here are some excellent reviews on the topic of atrioventricular block.